All right, now I want to think about the volume if I rotate around the y-axis. So this time I'm creating n intervals around y. So now I'm going to have a height that's delta y. My radius this time is going... <laughs> my radius, let's see if I can actually use the straight line tool, no. All right, so my radius here is going to be my x sub k value. So to find that, I know that uh, I need to isolate my x. So y was equal to 2 minus 2x squared this is the same as uh, if I isolate the x, I'm going to get 2x squared is equal to y plus 2x. If I'm looking at just this half of the curve, so from this area, my x is going to be equal to the square root of y plus 2 over 2. So this is going to be my radius. So my volume is going to be pi r squared times the height. So then I'll get the pi y plus 2 over 2, uh, sorry, y sub k. And this was square root, and I square it. So no more square root, delta y. And then if I sum to infinity, I'm going to end up with my integral of pi. So really what I had in general terms is x sub k squared dy. So I need to get my function for x in terms of y. So in this scenario, we would have the integral of this function dy. But in general, this is what we have where x is some function of y. And we could say more specifically x sub k if I was thinking about individual terms, but I didn't need the k here. So x is a function of y. And that's what we have summed up down here. So if I'm going to go around the x-axis, I have my function of x to make my radius, and it's always coming from pi r squared h. So the radius is going to be your y value in terms of x. If I go around the y-axis, then my radius is my x function in terms of y. So we're going to look at some more examples of that going forward.